Hello there. So, what I would show what uh, flow bench testing does and um, how to or where specifically to port the when doing porting, where to do the um, metal removal for the um, this is a five valve four AG five valve four AG better known as a twenty valve. Um, this is the silver block casting for both. Um, this is the ported version and this is a stock. Oh, actually it's my test port. That's my test head, so what I do my experiments and stuff on. Hence that's why there's a hole in here. So ignore that for the moment. What we want to focus on is these two ports right here. So this is the standard port. And if we get in close, we can see that it's not very big, but not only is the, the port exit not very large, get out of there. not only is the port exit not very big, but it's also quite flat, so it's quite straight and goes and makes a sharp U-turn in to pick up the other two, um, the branch. And for the multi, uh, for the dual valve um, exhaust, so it's quite um, flow restricted. And so to fix that, we go and do this. We make the port um, the same size as a black top, but more specifically, we focus on the top half of the port. And if I bring my screwdriver in here. I'll show you more what I mean. So up here, the air, more air, or the gases when the valve opens, the gases spend more time, there's a lot more movement on the roof. So we want to make this as straight and as wide as possible to be accommodating for that flow. So that's why I've taken out here, but left the floor, just mainly just taking this casting off and nothing more which is why this is quite round and this is quite wide and open and also rather sharp up in here on the junction we can also see through the port that it's the roof is quite straight so it's reasonably straight along there is a curve to it and it joins more towards uh, the opening rather than back in here now this modification now m m opening this section and opening this section up increases the port um, that increases port CFM from around 130 to 155 and it also does it at low to medium lift so you achieve those targets at about um, I think it's uh, 0.2 to 0.2 and a half, 0.2 to 0.25 inches of lift. You're running in the 150 to 155 CFM. And it holds all the way to 0.4. So that's the um, port work. So as you can see, it's quite rounded on the bottom of that one. And then up the top is reasonably square. So you have to remember that the top half of this port is very very busy so we've got a lot of air movement and it's moving really really fast and down on the bottom is actually quite dead and if you can I haven't done it on mine but effectively half of this port you would do a hell of a lot better if half of this port so from the bottom half at least was filled so either you were you get some good epoxy two-part epoxy and you fill it or you weld fill it but whichever way you're doing, you're going back in here and you are filling and you are reshaping the, the floor and you want to bring it up so that it is in line with half of that. And what this does and why you would want to do this is this is the part where people get a little bit confused with what's called reversion. So when the exhaust gas is moving, up the top and the gases are escaping they're moving at high velocity and 
in some regards they do have high pressure but because of their inertia so the momentum that they have when they come in they are released the pressure and the movement is associated in the top half of the port now the bottom half of the port is stagnant so it just sits there and while there will be an air pressure change way back here so the air will move forward because naturally the way the air is being the the way the air movement comes up with the point of separation there will be a low pressure zone so gas will move this way towards that low pressure get pulled up into the high flowing air and then come and then come out so in part that's reasonably well but the problem exists is when the exhaust gas has been successfully um, evacuated from the cylinder and we enter into the scavenge um, part of the cycle this lower section here becomes a positive pressure which then goes to fill in the negative pressure that's being created by the escaping gases so this then have more has more of a chance to either enter into the cylinder and thus entering into the intake manifold or simply rising up and taking up that negative space that is being created because it's all about pressure gradients and pressure change so if you've got a low pressure a high pressure moving fast and then it changes to a low pressure zone and this area here isn't moving then this becomes the high pressure zone which goes to fill in the void and that's what reversion is all about is the pressure gradients and if you don't get your pressure gradient right then you wind up with reverse flow so that's a bit of a rundown on how to and where to port and also some flow numbers it does look a little bit filthy it has come off a uh, running engine they had it running for about 120,000 k's um, it was about um, where did I run this this is on my standard cams so the best this head up the best this head cylinder head combo saw was about um, actually it was not that great because it ran standard cams the best it actually saw was a very um, economical run of 798 k's to um, 50 litres gas so it was very economical but speed wise with standard cams it actually didn't show the benefit and it was more the cams became the letdown not the port so if you're going to do porting like this which is probably the bigger one that needs to be remembered if you're going to do the port work like this you need to run a larger duration camshaft if you don't do that then you're not going to get the financial sorry you're not going to get the speed benefit and what this port can offer you have to run a bigger camshaft yeah well, thanks for the uh, thanks for the watch. Hopefully you learnt something, and hopefully it gets you out in that shed and um, working on your stuff. Well, cheers. We'll see you next time.